card. Going to be going to the top or bottom here in just a moment. Removal spells. Car drawing spells. Planeswalkers. So that's the order of the day. Danny Jessup, number three here on our season two leaderboard. Pretty important match for him. Absolutely. I mean, this is a top eight here, and he is going to be second place in the standings, catapulting past Kevin Jones, and being in the top spot right now in the race for the Players' Championship invite at the end of Season 2. He was the odd man out last year for the Players' Championship. He was the first player on the outside looking in. And oddly enough, he was the, as far as points were concerned, he was the odd man out and he lost the finals of the Invitational to qualify. Exactly. He was kind of the last guy out in two different ways. Yeah, which is really tough to take. So he clearly wants to achieve that goal this year as he plays the lateral waste and passes the turn back. Ops on Charm here for Feingersh. He'll draw two cards, and Hostilities is one of them. Draw for the turn to Temple of Mali. Of course, you have Crewfix in hand. He'll start by playing that. Top card, Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. A little pricey. It's going to the bottom now from the Temple. Let's see what's on top after that. Courser yet again. One copy of Ugin in the sideboard. For now, it's on the bottom of the deck. There is some shuffling effects here. Winslow up Heath most notably, so not necessarily gone forever. That is correct. And Jessup will play his Winslow up to Heath. He'll sacrifice it. Go down to 18. Forrester planes coming. Danny, good friends with Jim Davis. They are travel buddies. Jim qualifying for the player championship during season number one. Danny looking to do it during season number two. And Danny's been on a, a bit of a heater so far, starting off one and two after his two buys and has rattled off quite a few wins since. He's got a Siege Rhino. He's back up to 20, finding Gersh down to 14. Top card here for Ben is a copy of Sansev Citadel. You saw his draw for the turn was course with Crewfix. Hero's downfall in hand. Can take care of that Siege Rhino if he'd like. He'll start by playing the land Elspeth on top of the deck. He'll pass the turn back. Jessup will untap and draw. Sansep Citadel is what he's found. In for four, Jessup will come. Feingersh is going to go down to 11. Making no move to use Hero's Downfall on the Siege Rhino here. Willing to take these shots. Got end hostilities in hand, and I think he's trying to maybe get a little bit more for it. Sansep Citadel the passing of the turn. I think the thought process here was if Danny did anything threatening, he would be able to take care of it. But he's willing to take four points of damage here. There's Courser. Here's Sansa have it up to 13. And if Dandy curves out with another creature in that spot, well, great, now your end hostilities has gotten better. Yeah, perhaps even playing around a card there like Sidisi, for example. Exactly, which kind of goes to show you how much this game is about big haymakers and what's happening on the board, where Ben had an opportunity there to just downfall the Rhino right away, which would have saved him four damage and freed up his Courser to attack on the same turn, and instead just was willing to take the hit to keep his options open. See the top card of Fine Gersh's deck is a copy of Bob's on Charm. Again, two copies of Elspeth and Hannah and Hostilities over there, too. The thing I'm scanning now for Danny, kind of card that can catch him up in this situation, is he have a card like Ugin in his deck. I don't see one throughout his 75 here. He'll start by playing Elspeth first. Yeah, his deck's got a slightly more aggressive tilt to it with... Yep with uh, Deathmiss Raptors, and not that the Den Protector is particularly aggressive, but it does synergize there with the Deathmiss Raptor, Whisperwood Elemental as well. A little bit more creature-focused. And he did say that he liked that combination of cards when we talked to him. Uh, he said the Deathmiss Raptor has been just awesome for him the whole weekend. Well, Jessup's the first one with Elspeth. And Feingersh does have two copies of Elspeth in his hand. He'll start by playing this Forest off the Courser, so Courser building a small incremental advantage as there's Nissa World Waker on top of the deck. That's been pretty big for Ben. I mean, I think he mulliganed this game by the books of his opening hand. He was missing some land drops. Corsair has been uh, keeping his head above water in terms of resources and land drops here. Danny's still with a stocked hand himself. But no immediate answer to Elspeth, by the looks of things. May simply attack Elspeth with his creatures to get some jump blocks and play an Elspeth of his own. Try to get ahead of the Elspeth race that way. 
into the red zone are going to go to the Coursers. They'll be attacking Elspeth unsurprisingly. Danny would like to protect his Planeswalker, so two soldiers will go down. I, mean, I suppose Ben can use Abzan Charm to draw some cards here, but I, I don't really see any other line of play here besides Elspeth, given what his hand looks like. Yeah, I think I agree with you. Three soldiers are going to come in. So now we're going to have a good old fashioned Elspeth fight, something we haven't had for a little while here. Jamoka's command the draw. You can see just how different Jessup's deck is. Yeah, definitely the aggressor in this matchup. Two Jamoka's commands in his main deck this weekend. Jessup has played a lot of Obzon over the past handful of months. His second place finish at the Season 4 Invitational in Seattle last year. Played Obzon mid-range. Lost in the finals, of course, to Dylan Donegan. Here's the attack. So you have to imagine he's pretty familiar with the mirrors. Doesn't mean his deck is well situated for the mirror. But you have to imagine that he's familiar with it. it, it I, I think you generally want to be the more controlling of the decks in the mirror match because it just goes on for a long time. There's a lot of removal and so forth. So individual creatures are not particularly powerful. That said, the ones that differentiate Danny's list here seem good in long games. Deathmiss Raptor, Den Protector, Whispered Elemental are all good threats for this kind of matchup. Whispered Elemental, as you mentioned, just a heck of a magic card. It's not like he's cranking out, you know, ward of the first trees. They get invalidated on the board. It's, yeah. it's stuff that can play a long game. There's Whisperwood. The follow-up is Dramoka's command. Yeah, this could be fight and sacrifice and enchantment, potentially. As long as everything lines up accordingly with the card. Yeah, this is where the... what? Do, how are the effects of the card listed yep. out become relevant? I think that's why you have to see him fight a token. Okay. And now he'll manifest. And there you do see it, because it's, it's a how the effect is listed on the card. So target yep. player sacrifices an enchantment and then fight. So if he chose to, basically he can't fight a course and kill the other course. Exactly. It's not going to work the way he He wants. announces that we're going to be fighting and you sacrifice enchantment, he can sacrifice the courser that's targeted by the fight effect. If it was listed the other way, then it would work fine. Correct. Cryptic Command has some of the same corner case scenarios where depending on what you're trying to do, certain things work and do not work because of the way the effects are listed out on the card. Fine, Gersh going to tap some mana here. Let's see what it's for. We know he has Nissa in his hand. Another Elspeth too, but he doesn't need that other Elspeth right now. I think he's trying to figure out if I'm going to play Nissa. What am I going to do with Nissa? He will play Nissa. Temple of Silence is going to become a 4-4. Here's two mana. I believe we're going to have ultimate price take care of Whisperwood Elemental. Magic players, we are still taking sign-ups for our 2 p.m. Legacy Challenge. Elspeth will take up. Have ben needs to make sure the board is reasonably contained because he is likely to lose the race at this point towards the Elspeth album because Danny got to go first. Yep. Feingers deciding if he wants to attack or not right now. Well, at this point, he's potentially giving up the Courser for not a lot. Yeah. And the Courser is an important card. He still needs to make more land drops. His hand is a little glutted, and he does have a Nissa in play, so the more lands, the better. Jessup will draw a copy of Sam's Epsidal. You can see his hand. He's got Obzon Charm, Fleece Mainline, and just lands right now. So he is trying his darndest to protect this Elspeth and get that emblem first. That's the trick. We'll see if he can do it. Got some math to do here, about 13 minutes to go. And neither player looking for a draw here. No. 
No, no, no. Put you in a position where you have to win next round and then hope. Please in line looks like the place that Jessup's going to start. Well, this is an, a, a reasonable opportunity to get Fleece Man line and go monstrous with it. Yep. And that creates some problems for Ben. It does lock up the ground, which is all that Ben's attacking on right now. It also means when Danny goes ultimate with Elspeth if he wants to next turn, mm -hmm. uh, the clock is quite a bit faster. Three more soldiers, a monstrous Fleece Man line, and a passing of the turn there for Jessup. He used all of his mana, even got to play his hands up Citadel too. Now he's at the mercy of what Feingers can do this turn. And I don't think Ben's hand really offers very much in this spot. He does not have the ability to remove Elspeth from the table. He doesn't have Hero's Downfall or a similar effect. The end hostilities is not ideal to cast into the face of the Fleece main line that's gone monstrous. Though Ben may not have a choice because he's looking at lethal on the way back. And I'm not sure that Ben can cobble together an attack here to make enough inroads on Danny's Elspeth because there's such good block supported to Danny right now. He has a Fleece Mainline available to eat the largest creature, a Manifest Token available to take care of one of the soldiers. Perhaps this all goes back to the way that Ben used that hero's downfall. Yes. I mean, that uh, it, it would have been pretty risky there to just leave the Siege Rhino in play forever and ever, but uh, his line of play was vulnerable to Elspeth if Danny had it in front of his own, and that's what's happened. And Ben may actually be forced now to just obs on charm and hope to find a downfall. Mm -hmm. He may not have another route. Liliana Vest, the top card of the deck here from the temple. Looks like it's staying on top. Feingers going to make another land of 4-4. Four, four. This attack does allow him to make some inroads, but the, the problem is that he does lose a lot of his board in this whole, whole sequence. Excuse me, I'm going to block one land. I think we're going to see a bunch of soldiers block a bunch of soldiers. And if you're Danny, you got to be a little wary of a card like Obs on Charm if you can. If you can't, obviously that's one thing. If you can, that's another. But the blocks do seem relatively straightforward here for Jessup. He can put soldiers on soldiers. He can use his Manifest Creature and then two soldiers to block a 4-4 land. He can use his Fleece Main line, which is a 4-4 Instructable right now due to Monstrosity on another land. Well, the tokens left over also allow him to overblock on one of the tokens if yep. he's, you know, there's there's some pretty straightforward handholds here, but the specifics of the block are definitely a little complicated. We'll see exactly how the blocks are going to be done here by Jessup. And if Feingersh will make some sort of moves, you can see the Obs on Charm in his hand right now. It's at the front of it. And he can distribute some counters as he wish. It looks like that forest is going to come in here unblocked. Obs on Charm. Again, this, these counters, you get to distribute two plus one plus one counters as you like. Yep. A lot of people think it might just be two plus one plus one counters on one creature. But you can move them around even on your opponent's stuff. So a bunch of damage is going to be dealt. Elspeth's going to move down. It's out of two counters. The morph was a Soren. So now the ball is back in Danny's court because Ben's uh, attacks there were able to make enough inroads into uh, Danny's board that this emblem on the way back for Ben will be lethal yeah. unless Danny does quite a bit to the board. And yeah, this is horrible news. Siege right out of the draw. And with Nissa and the courts are still available, it's going to be lethal by quite a bit.
now he might be forced to actually cast out on and draw cards to try to find a hero's downfall. Yeah, I, I thought that Ben was in a bit more trouble last turn than those attacks would have indicated. He was able to do some real work on Elspeth uh, and on Danny's board. As long as he was able to get a point of damage in on Elspeth and protect his own Planeswalkers on the way back, uh, it was going to be a pretty good attack for him. And that odds on charm ensured that that was able to happen. I'm not sure what the best line of play is here for Jessup in this turn. He's in a real tough spot now. Well, the sort of the way that you evaluate boards like this is step one is, can I win or protect myself with the Obzon Charm doing one of the, either the counter mode or the removal mode? If not, then use it to look for help. He needs quite a bit of help. Another thing to keep in mind is if, if Danny has no blockers back, if he sends everything trying to make the, some inroads of these planeswalkers, there's still 14 damage coming back on the board, plus Nyssa, which is another four, which is now up to 18. And Danny is only at 15. So even if he's able to remove the Elspeth, just the leftovers plus the Nyssa might be too much for Danny to overcome. Yeah. Not to mention, the Sobson Charm's got some real work to do. I mean, it's actually got to hit something relevant, too. Plus he takes two and goes out of 13, Corsair, Herborg, and those aren't very helpful. And given how much of the mirror Danny Jessup has played, I think he knows that. Yep. And now he's just got to attack and hope that, that Ben does something to mess up the blocks here. There are your blocks. Ben with a very well-navigated game here. Yeah, I think so too. That's going to tick up. Maybe Danny plays a Siege Rhino here. Well, if he plays a Siege Rhino, then I think uh, a game's just there's, over. there's no reason for Ben not to make an M1 with Elspeth. Yeah. Danny kind of needs to keep up appearances. I think with another Elspeth in hand, Ben's just going to be going for it next yep. turn. But uh, if Danny taps too low, then there's no reason for Ben not to. Of course, sir, top card temple plenty. Here is Temple. Danny going to gain a life. Scry here. Obzon Charm. That'll go to the bottom. Next card. Temple of Malady. Pass the turn back. I'd say that's going to be Jessup's draw next turn, but I don't think there's going to be a next turn. Yep. Liliana Vest the draw. Top card is a lateral waste here for Feingersh. And it's easy to say here from the booth to pull the trigger on the Elspeth. Make a land a 4-4 and get in there. Can't forget all these lands are 4-4s. Four They'd be 6-6 six, six flyers. Yeah. One of them would actually be a 7-7 seven, seven flyer since it has a counter from Amazon Charm, which is more than enough. And in this spot, uh, you know, typically when Elspeth's about to go ultimate, the major consideration is Bioblight. But Bioblight's not even uh, part of this because there's no soldier tokens on Ben's side of the table. Yeah. But Ben got to be careful, as he should be. You know, run through what can go wrong in your head here. So even in a world where Danny has a murderous cut, you make a token with Nissa, that becomes a 6-6 six, six because of the emblem. I still, yeah, there's still more than 14 coming across, even in the murderous cut scenario. Yeah, it's basically foolproof at this point. You mentioned murderous cut and how that could kill the Temple of Silence. Yep. That's a 7-7. Seven, seven. This is going to make this land into a 4-4, actually a 6-6 six, six because of the Elspeth emblem. Has flying. Corsair, obviously, is a four-power creature. And at this point, you just say, everybody come to you, and that's in the extension of the hand. Ben Feinger is going to win this match over Danny Jessup. Two games to one. Ops on control. Mirror goes to Ben. He's up to 11-3 and three for Danny. I don't want to say it's a wasted opportunity. So obviously, he battled his heart out, especially after coming off of a rough stretch off of his buys but not going to make top eight now. Yeah, that one's...